Immigrants to the UK have received a rush of negative press confounded by low public support. But how valuable are immigrants to UK corporations and how easy are they to employ? To speak about the laws and regulations in place to govern international migration is Sophie Barrett-Brown from Laura Devine Solicitors. Well Sophie, let's start with how important is immigration to the UK economy as a whole? I'd certainly say they're hugely important and I very much speak from the perspective of employers who employ migrant workers. Um, there have been a number of studies that have, have demonstrated that they're key in, in certain industries, many of them extremely skilled. Okay, well moving over to large corporations now, and how important is it to have a migrant-friendly environment? It's very important for those companies who need that, that skill base. Um, so it does very much depend on the, on the particular companies and the particular industries, but a negative climate around immigration can create concerns for business, it can deter businesses, particularly inward investment. There have been various examples that I've encountered even in my own practice and more widely spread examples of companies that have chosen to set up in other countries because of concerns around being able to get the staff that they need to come to the UK. Well, how does the UK stand in terms of the European context? It's quite a sort of mixed position. Each European country has its own domestic laws and they operate very, very differently. And in some respects, the UK does have some positives. So the way its system is structured, it is able to respond very, very quickly in certain circumstances. Tier two of the points-based system, uh, once a, a company actually has a license in place to be able to, to sponsor workers under tier two, can mean that within a matter of days they could have a worker in place. But uh, it can be cumbersome to obtain the license uh, and it can be uh, very difficult for the companies to find their way through the sort of myriad of uh, requirements and controls. How does the UK manage EU migration compared to non-EU migration? The UK as a, as a host country for migrant workers from the EU, uh, in theory, should uh, apply the same uh, rules in the same way as other EU countries. But when it comes to migrants who are coming from outside the European Union, then it goes to the domestic laws of each individual member state country and they are all completely different and operate uh, very, very differently indeed. So the UK system principally has a points-based system and tier two is the main route that's used for employers, but there are categories outside the points-based system as well. Well, there is a reoccurring debate about whether companies should just train local youngsters or hire qualified workers. So how does the UK handle this? The UK immigration system itself doesn't really influence that debate insofar as uh, the, the system doesn't compel employers to have particular schemes in place. Um, that's a, a separate area of policy. But in my experience of, of clients, reaching for uh, an international solution is not the first port of call. It can be very expensive to have an international assignment and many employers will first try to um, to recruit locally and train locally. But there are occasions when the skills that are needed are not existent here. What we do have in the UK points-based system is the resume market test as part of tier two, which does compel employers to test the resident workforce. But that's more about engaging a, a resident worker who's already capable of doing the job. So the UK doesn't ever really have anything like positive dis discrimination for nationals? Its positive discrimination is, is essentially in the resident labour market test uh, and I say that because that test requires employers not to reject any what's called a settled worker, basically a British citizen, a European citizen or someone who may be a foreign national but has indefinite leave to remain here. Uh, they can only um, reject a, a, an applicant of uh, one of those sort of nationalities if they are incapable of performing the role. Are there actually quotas in place on how many immigrants a company can employ? There are, but in a limited way. Uh, so the quotas only exist in the context of Tier 2 of the points-based system and only in a particular subset. So for Tier 2 intra-company transfers, there are no specific quotas in place. However, a company must uh, ask for a, a number of certificates of sponsorship to be able to sponsor foreign national intra-company transferees, but they can ask for that to be increased at any time and it will be decision will be made on a case-by-case -case basis. For Tier 2 general, and that's where they're 
essentially non-intracompany transferees and new hires. Some of those certificates of sponsorship for Tier 2 general applicants are what are termed restricted, where there is a cap, and some are not. And that cap is an annual limit for all employers wanting to use it of 20,700. And it's never been reached since it, since it came into force a few years ago. Immigration law is sometimes at loggerheads with employment law, so which one wins out in the end? Each wins in its own context. So it, it very much depends on the nature of the claim or dispute uh, or compliance point that is, is being raised. If an employer has, for example, failed to satisfy the resident labour market test adequately because they have rejected a British candidate who was capable of doing the job but was nowhere near the performance standard of the foreign national, that would mean that they haven't met the requirements of the test, it would mean they've assigned the certificate of sponsorship incorrectly and that they're effectively in default of their licence. If, however, they choose that resident worker applicant and the foreign national applicant brings a claim saying, I am clearly by far the stronger candidate, then potentially in the employment tribunal they could be looking at significant damages. Well, how do regulations differ when it comes to skilled and non-skilled workers? The UK doesn't really provide for non-skilled workers. Uh, so under the points-based system and the various tiers, there is a tier three for low-skilled workers that has never been implemented. So it, it, it exists in name, but there is nothing behind that. Well, finally, what advice could you give to corporations who are taking on migrants? What's the biggest pitfalls maybe they can fall into and how can they avoid these? The greatest area they need to be aware of is the compliance issues around tier two. Um, as I mentioned earlier, tier two does have great advantages um, compared to the previous immigration laws to the extent that it can respond very quickly to situations. But that responsiveness can also sometimes give a false sense of security and it's quite easy to make errors unwittingly. It's really critical that employers who are using Tier 2 make sure that they have a full understanding of the Tier 2 sponsorship duties uh, and keep that up to date because it's changing all the time. So to either have in-house people who are, are very skilled and focus on that area or to use external advisors who specialise. Sophie, thank you. My pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.